Back from the brink, the Vikings face another tough test, the rival Packers in Green Bay. We're breaking it down. Tim Brewster's gone. What's next for the Gophers? We have the latest. And Louie the author is back, and hockey is center stage. It's all ahead. It's game on. I think it's a season changer when they go to the pack because of the rivalry. When they get a chance to come head to head, they come out of that game. It's a big game no matter where they are in win loss records. It definitely makes a difference. When you beat the pack, it says something about what you can do. And it is game on, fed by Acapulco restaurants. Rod Simons, delighted you are in the house. Week seven of the National Football League season. You know, the bench warmers right here get to you in just a second, but let's set this game by the numbers. The Packers and Vikings, always great stuff when we get after it. Vikings could be getting Green Bay at the right time. 99th meeting, the Packers have a slight series edge. Aaron Rodgers, as we're gonna be talking about, he was pretty sharp last week, but the Vikings won both games last season. Bob Lertzema is right here. Great to have you with us again. Game on, man. Game That's on game is on. What I'm liking this. Ta let's talk about the rivalry. You've played in a number of these games. You are still very, very close. And every game is special National Football League. When it's the Packers and Vikings, it's huge. It's Lambeau Field. I, I got goosebumps right now because when I was in New York Giants, my rookie year, I was introduced in the starting lineup and I was always the first one introduced. Yes. And when they say your name and you run on the Lambeau Field, the tradition just explodes in your soul. Yeah. There's no finer place to play. And right now that with the Vikings Packers, there's no greater, greater rivalry. It's spectacular. I just wish I was there playing. <laughs> you know, when you're watching the game, and we have plenty of time to talk about this, but when you're watching the game, it's one thing. When you're there, the Packers come out of a gigantic tunnel. The visitors get that small little <laughs> sliver of it. They let, they remind you who you are when you come. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's a funny thing. Remember the, the Randy Moss, they talk oh, yeah. about him mooning? Yeah. Uh, On that one goalpost. Yeah. But you know what the, you know, what the fans do when you leave and you yes. got your bus, all the fans out there moon, <laughs> moon the, the team that's leaving. That's true. So Randy got a bad call on that. So you're going to watch Randy kind of have a little payback. He does that in his own way. Yeah. You know, you kind of read between the lines of what he says. Uh, well, okay, let's talk about Moss because Moss and Favre together, one of the things that we had been talking about over the last few days is it's something special when you're a player in this series, when you are an ex-player going back to Lambeau Field and you have Randy Moss, you expect fireworks. Oh, absolutely. See, when I was with the Seattle Seahawks, I was traded that year and I came back to the old MEP that same year. And, and I talked to, to, to Brett Favre about that. I said, there's no greater thrill than going in the backyard of the team that cuts you. And I mean, you just love it. I mean, yeah. all the Super Bowls in the world, I told uh, Brett Favre that, and after the game in Lambeau, I said, well, how was it? He got up and gave me the biggest hug. He says, you're right, Bob. I never had a bigger thrill. Yeah. And for all you Viking fans out there, we did beat him twice last year with Brett Favre and just coincidentally, he was Offensive Player of the Week both weeks. So talk about going back to your old team and really, really stuck it to it. But no greater thrill. I mean, I wish I was in Brett Favre's seats because he just is going to have a great game and yep. it's going to be spectacular and a Sunday night, which I like. And we have the bench warmers prediction that will be coming later on in this broadcast as well as breaking down between the lines what we might expect. So that's coming up in our next segment. Just had to remind you, though, you don't forget to join us for our game on taping. We're at the Acapulco restaurant. You like this joint. It's awesome. It's I'm a beautiful it. place. We're yeah. in Ramsey, and you can get up close and personal. The bench warmer is signing with people for about a half hour tonight. Uh, this Tuesday, Acapulco in Ramsey at 7 o'clock. Lots of food. We'll be uh, previewing the New England Vikings game, autographs, and a lot more. So we will see you Tuesday at Acapulco in Ramsey. Up next here on Game On, fed by Acapulco restaurants. We're gonna be breaking down what's going on in Dinky Town. A lot of upheaval. What's next after the firing of Tim Brewster? And we're going to be talking about a conference that doesn't get enough cred. The Mayak Minute. It's all ahead and more. Next on Game On. Game On. I love that. I just love that. What do you ladies got there? What is apple pecan chicken salad and a baked potato? A BLT cob and a chili. For one price, you can pick two things. What do you got? This. Oh, only one thing? I have something else. My pookie bear, you're my pookie bear, my pookie. Now you can pick 
two at Wendy's. Any half-size salad and one of seven tasty options for just $4.99. You know when it's real. The sun has always powered life. And now it powers our latest innovation to heat and cool your home more efficiently. Introducing the world's only solar-powered home energy system, which saves you up to half off your heating and cooling bill. Go green with Liberty Comfort Systems and your neighbors will be green with envy. Get the latest in green technology and save some green. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Walling Berg and Deebly believes in families. We understand and support families in all their many forms. And when legal problems arise in the family, Walling, Berg, and Deebly is there. Walling, Berg, and Deebly, the premier family law firm of Minnesota. When you need us, call 612-326-3453 or visit wbdlaw.com. It's the most important thing there is. Second is to sweep the Bears. It's only nice if we win the division and go on to the playoffs. We're back on Game On, fed by Acapulco Restaurants. Great to have you with us, Rod Simon, Slurtsy with us, and, and that fan, very, very excited. He knows how to cook up the brats, and I don't care if you're a fan or a player, it's hard not to get up for this rivalry. Oh, yeah, but since you saw the fans, how they're doing it, yeah. it's easy when you have the facilities outdoor yeah. the stadium yeah. to tailgate yeah. and, and at the old map believe in that they almost matched up perfectly with lambo's uh, fans right and after the game we would go out there as god's my witness we would go out there with the fans have a brat with them play yes. catch with the kids so that's how close the players and the fans are and ziggy will who i love to death right. he wants to have that type of atmosphere when they build a new stadium, which they will build. Well, we are stadium supporters. It's a great sure. rivalry, though. I mean, I didn't mean to go off it, but no, it's no better rivalry. When we look at these two teams that play later tonight, one of the things that you warn me about is, because I started rival just kind of rifling off all these injuries that they have, oh. and you started wagging your finger saying, just a second, they're still the Green Bay Packers. Oh, yeah. And Why do you say that? Well, number one, you're at home. That's a big, big plus. And we've lost the last eight on the road, the Vikings have. But Aaron Rodgers is the real deal. Yeah. He, people had a monster game last week. Oh, he'll have a monster game against us, too. I, I right. hope I shouldn't say that. Sorry, Vikings fans, <laughs> but Ben Spiller Bob doesn't lie. And because I'm really concerned about that because yeah. he's an outstanding quarterback. Outstanding. But they've come off two back to back OT losses on the field goals. So they could have just as easily be five and one. You know, at this point in the, in the season. Arguably, though, the Viking defense is a defense that the Packers haven't quite faced yet. Better in the defensive backfield this year, playing very well up front, although Jared Allen's not having many sacks. He seems to be playing a little bit better. And we have E.J. Henderson back. Well, E.J., e. what, what, what a wonderful what what man. Amazing. We, we have the best, best front seven in the National Football League. I agree. And Ray Edwards is your sleeper. Oh, yeah. We, we talked last year about how he's improving, doing the spin moves, working everything, right. how much he improved. And then the yo-yo, I'm, I'm supporting him, teaching him. He goes out and breaks my playoff sack yardage record <laughs> last year in the playoff. Yeah. But he's a sleeper in that group. And that's the best front seven in football. Our defensive backs were hurting. And that's where Aaron Rodgers and Greg Jennings, uh, the wide yeah. receiver from Western Michigan, my, my old university. Jennings had a, oh yeah, he had a big, he had a big game last week too. 138 yards. Yeah. That's what you have to worry about. It's going to be an awful, awful tough game. And quickly, looking at Adrian Peterson, you really like what he's doing this year. He's back to his old style. Yes, he is. He's not sitting there waiting, tiptoe. Let me wait for a hole. He, just like Dave Osborne told me, when we started talking about that, the old running back of the Bikes. 41. Hit, that's it. Hit it. You got to hit that hole. That's his style. He, he, he's just a, 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 flat, a thrasher in there. Don't change an athlete's style. He hits that hole and he hits about five or six other people at the same time. No, oh, yeah. Great yeah. stuff. Well, we have a couple more things to talk about. We'll have you back and give a prediction at the end of the show. I want to keep talking. Yeah, it's, I know you do. I, know you do. <laughs> I love the Vikes. Hey, don't forget, we also, we also talk a lot of other things and we're talking NBA. Don't forget to get to my blog. It's Simon Says with the latest on the Timberwolves at Timberwolves.com. Check it out. Drop me a line on your thoughts. Simon Says 
at Timberwolves.com. Up next, Lou Manning, the Gophers, and the Mayak Minute debuts. It's all ahead. It's, it's game time. Oh. Let's go. So you want to see some Wolves games this year, and you want to make sure to see him and him, but you don't really want to see them. Now, who's going with? Flying solo? Nah, it's more fun with the whole pack. And where should we sit? Can we move like that? Sure, with the Flex Pack, and we save. Build your pack, your tickets, your seats, your games. Online at Timberwolves.com slash flex. What do you ladies got there? What is apple pecan chicken salad and a baked potato? A BLT cock and a chili. For one price, you can pick two things. What do you got? This. Oh, only one thing? I have something else. Wendy's, any half size salad and one of seven tasty options for just $4.99. You know when it's real. Rochester, Lapidary Jewelers. If you want to look good, great style and value. Jewelry, gems, and stones. We've got everything you need at the Rochester, Lapidary, Lapidary Jewelers. Great style. It's the fact that both states and both communities at large make such a big deal out of it every time. It just, you grow up knowing that you want to beat the green. Welcome to Acapulco. Welcome back, this is Game On, fed by Acapulco restaurants. Great to have you with us. I'm Rod Simons along with John Hank. Great to have you in the house on this big game day. And ironically, we're not talking so much about the Vikings and Packers in this situation, but rather the Gophers. A big time move to fire Tim Brewster in the middle of the season. How often do you see that? You don't you, see that yeah. in college sports. You rarely yeah, see that. Exactly. And one of the things we've been talking about, and, and you've covered these teams for a lot of years right. as a young guy, <laughs> but you aren't surprised by them firing Brewster. Why is that? Uh, one thing, they have a head start now on finding a new coach at South Africa. They are looking for a new coach. My concern isn't so much about who they're looking for. It's what they're looking for. They need to bring a coach in here that has some NFL experience, maybe some collegiate experience. The reason for that is if you're going to attract great talent, they have to believe they can develop into NFL talent here. That's just the way it is in college football. But the larger question to me, Rod, having grown up here right. and loving this program, the Gophers, when I was growing up, was everything. I had a friend who wouldn't wash his hand for days because he shook hands with Bobby Bell. Yeah. That was the kind of passion that this community had. Then the Vikings came in, the Twins came in, things changed. But the thing I, I can't get, get around is that, honestly, this is not a great high school football state in terms of developing great high school talent. Now, you can argue Central Henderson. I can argue he didn't want to come here because he wanted to go to a school that could develop him into an NFL talent. If, if great athletes are migrating toward any sport in this state, they want to play hockey. They want to play gopher hockey. And one of the things that Brewster wanted to do, was unable to do, is keep the athletes. An argument for another day, but one of the things you said that has to be a prerequisite in this coaching search is far less bravado. Exactly. You can't come in here, as Brewster said, as we're going to a Rose Bowl, we're going to get a conference championship, Gopher Nation. I know what Red Sox Nation is, never heard of Gopher Nation before. The people in this community, they can't be fooled. And I think they have oh, to begin true. redefining what success is for this program, which I think Joe Maturi, the AD, was beginning to do this week when he talked about, well, the impact of professional sports, how does the Gophers fit into that, yeah. uh, recruiting players. If you go out state to recruit players, well, the players you're probably going to get if you recruit out state are players who aren't staying home in Ohio or aren't staying home in Florida. Right. So great college football programs develop from within, within the state. And that's what concerns me most about the Gophers. Well, we'll keep an eye on this. Thank you for being with us. More to come in the next couple of weeks. Time now to look at who's hot and who's cold. It's brought to us by Liberty Comfort Systems. And clearly, who's hot? you got to give out some love to those unsung Vikings. Remember a year ago when punter Chris Cluey was really in the doghouse? 
Well, now he's among the NFL's best. He's fourth net average at 41.5 yards, fourth in fair catches. He is a gigantic special teams member. He is who's hot this week. Cold's got to be the NFL Players Association for their alleged resistance to a crackdown on helmet to helmet hits. Concussion cases are dramatically up and more caution is desperately needed, not carelessness. Let's hope that the situation ends and a crackdown finds its way in place. That's who's hot and who's cold. And on this Sunday, we introduce a new segment on Game On. It's the Mayak Minute, spotlighting all the big things happening in D3. We know football is big in Minnesota from high school to college to professional. One segment of the football world is not quite getting enough exposure. Brought Dan McCain in. He's the commissioner of the Mayak to talk about it. Delighted to have you here. Welcome to Game On. Thanks for being here. This is my pleasure. I'm excited. Someone at home is probably looking at you saying, he looks a little young to be a commissioner of a league. Is that right? Right place, right time. At one point, I was the youngest commissioner in the nation. Is that right? Yes. When we look at the Mayak, great team. St. Thomas nationally ranked undefeated with seven wins, no losses. Do you guys ever feel like you're not getting enough attention? Yeah, we've got some really good stories to tell. We've got great student athletes, great coaches, and we always try to find that unique outlet. And, and I think this show is going to be one of those. Uh, nice. Game on, I think, is going to be great for us. Tell us about the Mayak for the people that don't know about all the teams and the, the real grassroots connection to this state. Well, absolutely. We've got uh, 13 member institutions established in 1920, our conference was. They're all locally to uh, Minnesota. Um, we've got about six in the Twin Cities area, 6,000 student athletes, and 70% of them are local, homegrown Minnesota kids. Nice. And when we talk about D3 athletics, one of the things you might not know at home these players, they play for the passion of the sport because they're not scholarship. No athletic scholarships. Uh, they love the game. They want a great education. And our coaches and our institutions are putting them in that spot to uh, give them a great experience on campus. What's the biggest difference between D1, D2, D3? I think it's, it's a balance. There, there's no athletic scholarship. There's no redshirting. So it's that balance of having a great competition on the field, doing great work in the classroom, and then you can do internships, study abroad, all that stuff, that well-rounded student athlete. And when we talk about the football league, St. Thomas, Bethel, they're, they're nationally ranked. St. Thomas up at fifth now? Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, they've made a great run over the last couple of years. They're undefeated, they're, they're doing a great job. And they beat St. John's just a few weekends ago to, to really make a statement, because when you beat St. John's, you do that. That's a huge win for St. Saint, Saint Thomas, and they really set a tone for that program. So the season is young. We'll get going, and we'll have you back next week. Thank it's you very pleasure. much. My pleasure. Thanks, Rod. The Mayak Minute right here on Game On. And don't forget, when you need great transportation to move around the metro, call on City View White Knight Limousine, Town Cars, Limousines, SUVs. City View is safe, reliable, and will handle all your needs. Get them at the web, awhitenightlimo.com. Working together means working efficiently. And a Lennox home comfort system may just be the perfect example. Its air conditioner works together with the furnace. And that works together with the air purifier. And that works with you by saving you up to half off your heating and cooling bill. The future of home comfort is here now at Liberty Comfort Systems. Get the latest in innovation and technology at Liberty Comfort Systems. Lennox, innovation never felt so good. Walling, Berg, and Deebly believes in families. We understand and support families in all their many forms. And when legal problems arise in the family, Walling, Berg, and Deebly is there. Walling, Berg, and Deebly, the premier family law firm of Minnesota. When you need us, call 612-326-3453 or visit wbdlaw.com. So, you want to see some Wolves games this year. And you want to make sure to see him. And him. But you don't really want to see them. Now, who's going with? Flying solo? Nah, it's more fun with the whole pack. And where should we sit? Can we move like that? Sure, with the Flex Pack, and we save. Build your pack, your tickets, your seats, your games. Online at Timberwolves.com slash flex.
Here's your Reels of Thunder magazine week ahead. Grab your pen now. Don't forget the Vikings are back on the road for a trip to New England. Randy Moss with that quick revenge trip to face the Patriots. The Wolves home opener is Wednesday against the Sacramento Kings on the very next day. The Wild and Alexander Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals tangle. Gophers are home against Ohio State at TCF Bank Stadium, and I'll be at the Boys and Girls Club Halloween Hoedown, a great charity. We'd love for you to join us at the Convention Center. Welcome back. This is Game On, and we're just a few hours away from the Vikings at Green Bay. Plenty of time for you to get out and be part of a big family must. Now, don't forget, pick up the family, pick up that big Halloween pumpkin, and get ready to carve because our Terry Knight has some great ideas, and football is at the forefront. Thanks, Rod. What says fall just as much as football? Pumpkins. And today we're going to create a game day eye catcher for your front door or indoors. We're here at Paul's Market in Apple Valley, and as we wade through the plethora of pumpkins, we want to pick one with smooth sides. Now, the bumpy pumpkins are fun to look at but tough to carve. We also want to make sure that we have strong, sturdy stems, and of course, a flat bottom. All right, let's go take a look. We've selected the best pumpkins. Now it's time to start carving. I'm using a plain kitchen knife. It's very sharp, but it fits very well in my hand. You wanna make sure you cut the top large enough to get your hand inside to scoop that goo. So let's go. Just jabbing into the pumpkin, working the knife back and forth, and then pulling it up out. You can see, you pull it out, you've already got some goo to deal with. I will shave this piece. Here's the fun part. We're scooping out as much of the seeds as we can. And by the way, I do save those seeds for roasting later. These stencil kits work so well for scooping the goo out and also the little tools to make it a lot easier to get your design on the pumpkin. I scored a Viking stencil. I got this off the internet. Cut the stencil out and then use stick pins to place the stencil. This little tool is extremely handy as you dot out the areas of your stencil. I'm making the punctures about an eighth to a quarter of an inch apart. And then after it's done, you can dust with just a little bit of flour so the holes show up easier and you start carving. And the best tool to use is out of that kit I showed you earlier, serrated edge on this little handy tool. The easiest way to handle it is to cut like this. And there we are. This is a pumpkin I did earlier. Go Vikings! Real candles with fire? Well, those days are over and long gone with the kitchen knife. Now we're using LED lights. And voila! I'm Terry Knight with your Garden Bite on Game On. Terry, great stuff. I'll be carving very quickly. And don't forget, if you have a couple of minutes, you want a great read, you gotta pick this up. It's called A Passion to Win. It's Lou Nanny's book. You know, the hockey legend is now author Lou Nanny, and it's got some great stuff in it. Lou tells us a little bit right now. Well, this is an autobiography, and I was asked by Jim Bruton, who co-authored with me, and also Triumph Books, to do a story about uh, my life and, and basically what drives me. And, and, and some of the stories about my hockey life and uh, growing up and also uh, a lot of stories about people in the NHL and also some stories about business and, and how they relate to uh, my overall athletic life. And the best job in life is playing hockey and I can't play anymore. So if I can't play at least I can watch it and enjoy it and be involved in it in, in my way without having all the stresses that I had before and that's what I talk about in the book, uh, some of the real stresses of being in the game and, and how they affected me. And, and this way I'm, I'm at arm's length, but still uh, close enough to be very involved and enjoy it. 
More from Lou in the next coming weeks. And a quick shout out to Mrs. Tesmer's Crossroads Preschool class. Thank you for welcoming me in to talk sports and TV the other day. I was invited by my little girl, Annie. It was a great time. Thanks to the kids for the welcoming. And back with some final thoughts from the bench warmer. You were at Lou Nanny's book signing the other day. That's right. And those stories he told about me, not true. Very nice. <laughs> not true. He, oh, he ripped on me so bad. He's Boy. a big fan. You guys, that's a mutual admiration society there. I love okay, it. Okay, just a couple of seconds before we go. Final thoughts on the Packers and Vikings. Who wins this game today? Well, it's going to be a very, very exciting game. And, and most important part, you have two of the top three quarterbacks in the National Football League. Peyton Manning's the only one better. And you have Greg Jennings from Aaron wow. Rodgers. That's what you have to stop. They have no running game. They lost Ryan Grant. Yep. So that stopped Jennings. They win the ball game. They lost your Michael Finley, the yep. tight end. Randy Moss, Brett Favre. First game they played together, Randy Moss was underthrown by on two different touchdown passes. Yep. Game speed is different than practice speed. Watch Brett Favre and Randy Moss put on a show. It's going to be 98-97 Vikings. It's going to be all over the place. Okay. Great game. They uh, will win, though. You think the Vikings win? Vikings awesome. win. That's great. I love them. And we leave it at that. That's it for us. Thank you for being with us. Check for updates and all the latest news at GameOnTVMN.com. You can also watch the shows back at a click of your mouse. You can have them right there. So, And we're also on Facebook. So thanks, Mertzi, for being with us. All I can say, 99, 98, Vikes. Always good to have you with us. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very, very much. Great. Fox NFL Sunday is next. Have a great Sunday and a great week ahead. Go, Vikes. Game on. Game on. Yeah. <laughs>